What's up guys? We are back with another Super 7 TMNT Ultimates review, taking a look at one figure in particular in this wave that I've really been dying to get my hands on because for whatever reason I have a weird fascination with this particular grunt, army builder, cannon fodder type of character. We're talking about the foot soldier here, so our first army builder when it comes to this line. And we've got him here, of course, just like the rest of this wave with the brown mailer box. So you get the Turtles logo there and the Foot Soldier name emblazoned to the middle. And of course you can pop this guy open and pull out another purple box because in this line, good guys are green and bad guys are purple. So we've got another slip cover. And again, I really, really dig this packaging presentation. I love everything about it from the shape to the size to the fact that they get unique pieces of artwork on the various slip covers. So that on its own is just a cool little detail. So he has a foot soldier uh, mask as the manhole cover artwork. And then of course, more of that purple artwork. Pop this guy open. And then you've got your big massive window with our foot soldier in there those purpley blue bricks and the Turtles logo down there on the bottom. And then the back of the box has got the foot logo, more of that brick wall motif, and then a little bit of a write-up, including a little tagline that calls him Shredder's right hand mummy. So yeah, I'm very excited to take a look at this guy. Uh, I'm all about foot soldiers, so let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the package, our Ultimates Foot Soldier. And just like the rest of this wave, this guy was provided for the purposes of review by Super 7. And yeah, this one is really doing it for me. So there's been a lot of positive things for me to say about every figure so far in this wave. I like Raph in a general sense. Baxter is imposing and visually stunning. Splinter is basically a perfect recreation of that vintage figure. This guy, though is absolutely firing on basically all cylinders for me. There's just about nothing that I really would have changed, save for save for one little thing on this guy. And he definitely exudes that vintage Playmates vibe. I have a big fondness for that vintage figure. I'll say that right now and get it out of the way. I love the vintage Foot Soldier toy design. So this guy is something that I had really high expectations for. And frankly, I think they've absolutely nailed it. So uh, let's get started and see what he can do, see how he moves around. So this guy has a really good range of motion at the neck. So of course it's a Foot Soldier and he's got kind of the head that juts forward out of the chest, not necessarily sitting atop the shoulders because they've got that kind of weird hunch. So he can look up really good. He does have good down. You've got tilt side to side and then rotation, but of course rotation on these guys is just sort of kicking their head to the side because again, it juts forward, uh, which is fine. That's kind of what I expect. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate. You've got your bicep swivel. Single rotating elbow gets you about 90 degrees. And then you've got your hinges at the wrist. And I was concerned about the cuffs on the sleeve, but they actually uh, provide a really good range no matter what. And then of course you've got rotation. He has a waist twist and I really wish that he had a crunch of some kind here. Granted, it would break up the sculpt quite a bit and it's very seamless and nice. And again, you know, the elbows are also seamless on this as well. I didn't mention that, uh, but I really wish he had a crunch. That's kind of the one thing I'm, I'm missing on this figure. In many ways, it's very comparable to the neck of foot soldiers as far as cartoon figures, because they don't have crunches either. Uh, so it's the same kind of situation. He looks great, but I wish he could lurch a little forward. Legs go all the way out so you can get him to do those foot soldier splits. No problems because you're going to do that, right? They kick forward. They go backwards probably further than you need. There is a uh, thigh cut up there. You've got your single rotating knee. Again, seamless. He has a boot cut uh, this time around. So we don't have that throughout this entire wave, but he has one. And then you've got your ankle hinge and then you've got rocker down there. So this guy probably is the best articulated figure in the wave, I'd say. Uh, he is very fluid. I've had no issues really posing him or just doing anything with him. I think he's got a really solid array of uh, articulation here. And frankly, he just looks really good with these seamless joints. I'm really, really happy with the way this looks aesthetically. Uh, so yeah, he does move nicely. No real issues to speak of here outside of the fact that I kind of wish he had an ab crunch, but then at the same time, you know, none of the other figures really have it either. Now, visually speaking with this guy, as far as the sculpt, the paint, the translation from vintage to ultimate's figure, he is definitely not as detailed in many ways as the other figures in this wave. So he is a guy that's wearing a lot of clothes. He doesn't have monster parts. He doesn't have a shell, you know, stuff like that. He doesn't have a body that's covered in fur. But as far as the look, this is 
as spot on as I think it can be. This is beautiful. And I don't want to, you know, sound like I'm giving it undue praise. I am so, so happy with the way this figure looks. I love everything about it. I think this is exactly what this line is supposed to be. You know, sure, Baxter Stockman is far more detailed in many ways because he's just got all that gruesome, uh, nasty, mutated fly flesh. But this guy looks exactly like the vintage figure. I mean, in every detail from the, uh, you know, the armor that's on his wrist that go all the way up the arm to his incredibly lanky arms that hang down to his knees. You've got the belts, you've got the straps that have added detail as far as sculpt work on them. So, you know, they actually look like some sort of fabric uh, is wrapped over him. He's got wraps on his uh, on his shins down here, wraps on the boots. So there's a lot of texture down here. The pants are are very wrinkled. So at the, at the crotch and then down where they meet the boots, things like that. It's just so, so well done. And this looks exactly like I wanted it to. The colors are really saturated. They've, they've also got a little bit of a matte finish to them. They're not glossy, glossy, but they're not, you know, totally painted over in the sense that they look kind of dry almost. So they definitely do have a little bit of a luster to them, a little bit of a sheen, uh, but they look so, so good. I love the uh, the kind of frill that hangs over him uh, on the on the collar piece there that deep purple a little bit of shading in there too to kind of bring out some of that sculpt but I really can't get over how well this thing was translated into this form uh, honestly I need a number of these guys and that's definitely a problem because you know it's kind of cost prohibitive to army build something that's forty five dollars each but I'm gonna get a couple of them I've got a few on pre order still so this guy is I mean he's essentially everything I wanted him to be it's it's great as far as the color work goes the sculpt work and I'll do a comparison to the vintage figure here but it's just really fantastically done I don't have any any real criticisms this is essentially a foot soldier that is just standing up instead of being crouched over and he, he can get into that goofy crouch if you really want him to and then of course he's crowned with this goofy, ridiculous head sculpt that has the mask that's pulled down over his face with those yellow eyes, and they are so well painted. Very crisp, very clean, nice glossy finish. It's a little bit more glossy than the rest of the figure. And then you've got the foot emblem that is sculpted on the head and then also painted. So that is uh, textured on there. Even those little toes are individually sculpted. So, I, you know, I may be gushing on this one, but I think it's warranted for this particular figure because really, visually speaking, Super 7 knocked this one completely out of the park for me. It looks so good. Now, as far as the accessories go, this guy is pretty well stocked. He has a number of weapons and a number of hands. I think he has the most hands out of any figure in this wave. So to start with, let's just do the hands. He has a set of gripping hands on him in the package. And then you've got a set of uh, kind of karate chop style hands. We've got a set of kind of two finger pointing hands, or you can use these as, of course, a posturing type of hand. We've got these uh, open open gripping hands. So you can use this to kind of uh, grip the stock of a gun or something like that. And then we've got some closed fists as well. So he's got 10 total hands. Then as far as weaponry goes, we've got two ninja stars. So we've seen these in this line already, but we've got more of them. I'm fine with that. Then we've got a knife. This is done up uh, with black, and then you've got some silver paint on the blade. This is kind of rubbery. It came out a little warped in the package, but it's relatively okay now, but it's a little it's a little on the flimsy side. We've got the um, ray gun, and this is really reminiscent of a, of a gun from the show. And then we've got the bigger blaster rifle, and this is another gun that's reminiscent of weaponry from the show. So more of that kind of gray plastic. There's a little bit of a wash on this one as well with little silver accents. Then we've got the two weapons that I think I most remember the foot soldier for. You've got the uh, the kind of techno flail here with a slightly rubbery uh, cord. It doesn't really bend or anything like that. It's not a bendy wire in there, but it's uh, it kind of retains its shape while still being able to, to posture a little bit. So you can kind of flex it and move it, but it will sort of go backwards, but it doesn't really feel like it's a full bendy wire in there. See, it's just going to pop right back, but it does look really good. And then we've got my favorite accessory. So you've got the kind of staff mace slash uh, jaws of life grabber arm uh, weaponry here. And I dig this thing quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's got some silver paint on it, some black accents, and it just looks so wacky and goofy. I mean, these two weapons are what I think of when I think of a foot soldier. So I'm really happy to have these. And they're also quite sizable as well. So they're really big, but he has uh, what? 
10 total hands, you've got five uh, bigger weapons, and then you've got the two ninja stars. So yeah, he does come pretty well stocked. And then of course he does have his uh, sprue, his rack, and it's got all of the aforementioned weapons on here as well done up in the gray plastic. So you've got that nostalgic callback to go with all of your newly painted and detailed weapons. And then, like I said, here is a comparison between our Vintage figure and our Ultimates figure. And frankly, despite the fact that this is not as, say, complex in terms of detail as other figures in this wave, I think it's really impressive how close these two are. I mean, this really does, to me, look like an upscaled version of the Vintage figure. I think Super 7 did a fantastic job. The only thing that maybe really stands out to me that is slightly different is the fact that you've got maybe more saturated colors on this figure. But, of course, this is... I don't know, what, a 32-year-old, 33-year-old figure, 32-year-old figure, and it's seen some wear and tear. Otherwise, though, I am very, very happy with how this guy's translated over. You know, little things like sculpting the foot emblem on the head looks really nice. Adding some battle damage into those uh, shell shields on his arms is a really nice touch as well. And it's just, it's like, again, it's just like seeing the figure you played with as a kid blown up and made into that thing you thought you had in your hands all along. I mean, this is exactly what I thought I was playing with as a kid. I know I keep saying that, but when you see these in person, it's exactly what you'll think of as well. And then of course let's do some size comparison. So we've got a few figures within the same line. So you've got Raph and then of course we've got Baxter over here so you can see that Baxter still towers over the foot soldier. But the foot soldier honestly towers over Raph as well. He still has a lot of size. And then let's do a few more uh, Ninja Turtle things from other other lines. So here he is with uh, Bebop. And then, of course, Rocksteady, the cartoon figures from NECA. So you can see the Foot Soldier is just as tall as Bebop, honestly. Of course, they have a lot of bulk on him, but he is uh, still very, very tall as far as uh, comparing to other figures like that. We've got Shredder, the NECA cartoon Shredder. And then a let's do a Black Series, so a Black Series Stormtrooper. And then for maybe something that is a little bit smaller, the NECA Krang. And you can see that he's quite a bit uh, bigger than uh, uh, old Brain Boy there. And then we'll swap out the Stormtrooper and do something a little bit bigger, a 7-inch figure, so the Matty Club Grey Skull uh, Filmation Skeletor. So you can see he's just about as big as Skeletor in terms of height. So he does have a lot of size. Uh, this thing is a very tall figure. Of course, if you want to put him in that, that vintage crunch, crouch situation, he is going to be a lot smaller. But if he's standing up normally, he does have a lot of size. And then speaking of... We do need to take a look at a full lineup of foot soldiers from this same sort of era-ish. So we've already talked about the comparison as far as how closely the new figure resembles the original. What about other figures that are foot soldiers from other types? So we've got our NECA Mirage comics. We've got our NECA cartoon. We've got, because why not, the Super 7 Reaction, our vintage playmates, of course. And then we've got our movie figure from uh, NECA as well. And really the only two that are truly comparable here are the cartoon from NECA and the Ultimates, because they do share a lot of similarities. Of course, they just have uh, different branching paths when it comes to design. So this guy is a little bit taller. He's a little bit beefier. And then, of course, you just have design choices that are different. A lot of the same elements exist, but at the same time, they are two uh, very unique and different looking types of foot soldiers. The Mirage almost doesn't even look like a foot soldier by comparison to these two. Uh, this guy looks really good, as does this guy in comparison. They all look like a nice little family. And then, of course, as much as I love the movie foot soldier, he is very far removed uh, from the entire situation just because he is a far more uh, real world type of thing. But here's an idea of what foot soldiers from this era of turtles look like. And it's a pretty solid spread. And this guy, I think, stacks up really nicely. So yeah, at the end of the day, I am really, really happy with this guy. It comes down to one big thing for me. Granted, there's a lot that goes into making this figure cool and fun, but there's one really big thing. It's that translation from vintage figure to this figure, to this modern Ultimates figure. And despite the fact that he might be, you know, a little bit more on the simplistic side than some of the other figures like Splinter and Baxter, just because they have a lot of detail, this guy exudes that vintage look, and it just kind of oozes out of him. He moves really well. Again, the only true criticism I have on this entire figure is the fact that he doesn't have a real ab crunch. I wish he had it. I mean, I, I think it would help the figure just to achieve a few more uh, dynamic poses. But at the end of the day, he still moves really well, and he has everything that every other figure has, and then some in a few regards. So he still has a lot of great articulation. He still moves really well. He's very fluid. The design is incredibly well done. The color saturation is really 
rich and vivid and vibrant, and it's just that figure made new again. And it really hits me in the nostalgia, which is, of course, a very big selling point for this line. This guy is, I mean, he's got to be my favorite when it comes to this wave. I want a handful of them. I need a small little crew of foot soldiers. And I think this might be uh, one of the standout figures for a lot of folks once you finally get it in hand and just see how much fun it is. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 TMNT Ultimates Foot Soldier. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.